This is a review of a Spider-Man audio interface, I guess. Hey, Julian Krauss here, and this is the Tascam US2X2HR audio interface, which is the successor to the US2X2 without the HR. HR in this case, of course, stands for high resolution, and this highlights that the new version has an upgraded A to D slash DA converter. According to Tascam, the US2X2HR has also improved preamps with a lower noise and distortion. To show you the audio quality, all audio for this video has of course been recorded with the 2x2HR and of course we are going to put Tascam's claim to the test with a few measurements that I made. But first, let's check out the hardware and build quality of the 2x2HR. The first thing you'll probably notice is the slight tilt of the interface when it sits on the table. The side structure is purposefully raised slightly on the front, which allows easy access to all the buttons and knobs, which I think is a great idea. One thing I'm not a big fan of though is the placement of the headphone and monitor volume knob. They are very close together and a bit tricky to turn, especially when you got headphones plugged in. The honeycomb structure and the rest of the housing is made from metal, which is why the 2x2HR feels very sturdy. The knobs also turn smoothly, so the build quality is quite nice. Let's quickly go over the connections, knobs and buttons of the 2x2HR. On the front you can find two XLR and TRS combo inputs, which either accept microphone signals via XLR or instrument and line level signals via quarter inch jack. To switch the input between instrument or line level input, you got two switches, one for each channel. Each channel also has a gain knob, a signal LED and a clipping indicator. On the far left you can also find a switch to turn phantom power on or off and this is controlling both inputs simultaneously. On the right, the 2x2HR features a knob which lets you dial in the precise amount of audio you will hear from your inputs and your PC, which is always appreciated. On the front you will also find a line out knob which controls the outputs on the back and a knob which controls the volume of the headphone output. It is located directly below and that's a quarter inch connection. On the back of the 2x2HR you got two quarter inch TRS connections for its line level outputs. The 2x2HR also features one MIDI in and one output. And it also has a USB Type-C connection to hook up the interface to a PC or iOS device. The 2x2HR is normally powered over USB, but some iOS devices do not provide enough power and in that case you can purchase a separate power supply which powers the interface and this can be plugged into the power connector here. I think that's enough about the outside of the device, let's have a small look inside. By the way, the sides are held into place by these four hex screws and when you take them off you can get access to the red plastic plate which is visible through the honeycomb grid. This most likely voids your warranty but if you really wanted to you could paint the plastic parts or put some kind of colored tape on them to customize the look of your 2x2HR. Would be cool if Cascam could provide different colored plastic covers with the interface as not everybody is into red. But back on track. As you can see, the preamps are realized in a discrete topology as claimed by Tascam. The analog to digital and digital to analog conversion is done by a Cirrus Logic CS4272 codec. And that's why Tascam is calling this a high resolution interface as the converter gives you a maximum sample rate of 192 kHz and 24 bits. But this alone doesn't tell you much about the audio performance of the 2x2HR, so let's have a look at some measurements. First thing I measured was the frequency response of the mic input and this should of course be as flat as possible to not accentuate or attenuate certain frequencies. This is the response I measured at the maximum gain setting and that's a very good performance. The 1dB drop at 20Hz is arguably inaudible and because of the 192kHz sample rate the response can extend way above the human hearing range and it has its minus 3dB point at around 75kHz. This even improves further when you use lower gain settings, which is often the case with condenser microphones. Here the response only deviates 0.3 dB from a flat response and that's only at 20 Hz. That's a very good performance. Now how about distortion? I measured the total harmonic distortion plus noise versus amplitude with a typical microphone level signal and as you can see above minus 12 dBFS the amount of distortion rises noticeably. This means that when you set your gain, you shouldn't let the audio peak too high, as this increases distortion. That said, this is how I would recommend to set your gain anyways, 
with your level peaking on average between minus 12 and minus 18 dBFS. I also measured the dynamic range of the mic input, which should be as high as possible. With a high dynamic range you can leave yourself more headroom while recording without introducing any additional noise. The 2x2HR comes in with a dynamic range of 110.7 dBA weighted. That's a very good value and this is on par with something like the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 third generation and actually not terribly surprising given that they both use the same AD slash DA converter. Now let's check out the preamp performance and also have a listen to the noise of the preamp. To show you a worst case scenario I'm currently recording with a Shure SM7B which outputs a very weak signal which has to be amplified a lot by the preamps and thus accentuating the preamp noise. Let me be quiet for a second so you can have a listen to the noise floor of this setup. The noise is really low and that's an exceptional performance. My measurements confirm that as the equivalent input noise of the 2x2HR is exactly minus 131 dBUA weighted. This is one of the lowest preamp noise measurements I made so far and compared to other interfaces this places the 2x2HR very close to the top. And here is how the preamp noise of a few of these interfaces compare audibly. This also answers the question whether you need a cloud lifter or fathead with the 2x2HR. Absolutely not, you hardly gain anything from such a device as the preamps in the 2x2HR are already ultra low noise. Additionally the interface provides a maximum system gain of around 50 decibels which means that you have enough gain to get even low sensitive dynamic mics up to a proper recording level. You might need to max out the gain on the 2x2HR with an SM7B but that's totally fine. Enough about the mic inputs, let's have a look at the line level inputs of the 2x2HR. The frequency response is extremely flat in the audible range with only 0.2 decibels drop off at 20 Hz which is negligible and that's exactly what you want to see. On the other hand of the spectrum the response even extends way above the human hearing range with the minus 3 dB point at 75 kHz. The THD plus N versus amplitude also looks very good showing a steadily descending line with just a small hint of rising distortions at around minus 100 decibels. This means that the distortion components are negligibly low and mostly buried in the noise floor. So how much noise does the line level output have? I measured the dynamic range which for the 2x2HR came in at 110.7 dBA weighted which is the exact same as for the mic input and a very good amount of dynamic range. And I want to highlight that the line level input on the 2x2HR can record proper professional line level with up to 18 dBV which is not always the case with consumer audio interfaces. So all in all the line level inputs are very good. Let's have a look at the quality of the outputs of the 2x2HR and let's start with the monitor output. Here is the frequency response of the main output which is essentially perfect because in the audible range it is a straight line across the graph. The response extends out even further only showing a minimal drop off below 20 Hz and above 20,000 Hz. When we have a look at the THD plus N versus amplitude graph we can see that the line levels out at around minus 100 decibels which means that the distortions are inaudibly low. You can also see that the 2x2HR delivers a very strong signal at the maximum volume setting of about 18 dBV. So with the 2x2HR you get a proper professional line level signal from the line level outputs which again is not standard for consumer interfaces in this price range. The dynamic range is also very good with 111.4 dBA and this means that there is next to no chance to hear any noise from the output. So the main outputs on the 2x2HR perform very nicely. An often overlooked part of the performance of an audio interface is the headphone output performance which of course is important when you want to monitor your audio with headphones. I made numerous measurements of the headphone output of the 2x2HR and here you can see how it performs compared to other audio interfaces. The colors will give you an indication of how well the interface performs in a particular measurement. Let's start out with the frequency response and as you can see the 2x2HR performs pretty well in this regard with a deviation in the audible range of only 0.8 decibels. 
Here is the frequency response graph and as you can see it is very flat, especially towards the upper limit of human hearing. In the lower frequencies you can see a bit more drop off, but this is still very much inaudible, so it's a very good response. Now the output impedance is sadly quite high with 66 ohms. I have made a whole video about how a high output impedance can have a negative impact on the sound quality and ideally you want to have a near zero output impedance to not change the sound of your headphones. To minimize the effects of the output impedance I suggest to use headphones with at least an impedance of 150 ohms and even higher would be better still. The second reason why you would want to use high impedance headphones with the 2x2HR is because of the high amount of distortion it produces with low impedance headphones. For example with 32 ohms the THD plus N is as high as minus 63 decibels at 1 kHz. You can see this more clearly in the THD plus N versus power graph. Here the distortion increases considerably above 100 microwatts. Interestingly this is a very similar behavior that I've also come across with the Focusrite Scarlet 3rd generation series. This distortion rises even more with higher frequencies as you can see in the THD plus N versus frequency graph. With a 300 ohm, the blue line, the 2x2HR performs much better. Here the distortion still rises towards higher frequencies, but this should be totally inaudible. Luckily when we have a look at the output power, we can see that the 2x2HR has enough power to drive even high impedance headphones to loud listening levels, which not many other USB powered interfaces can do. The noise of the headphone output of the 2x2HR is very low and inaudible with over ear headphones. The channel balance with 1.9 decibels is not that great though, meaning that I could notice that one side of my headphones was quieter when listening at very low volume levels. The crosstalk with minus 61 dB is pretty good and this means that hardly any audio leaks from one channel to the other and this is critical for getting a good stereo image. Before I conclude this video let's have a short look at the driver and latencies. When you install the provided driver you'll be greeted with this panel which looks a bit like a combination of Windows 95 style dropdowns and a modern UI which is clearly not meant to be viewed on a 4K screen as it is quite pixelated. Aside from the looks it's quite intuitive to use and the important features are easy to control. By the way you can even toggle whether you like to hear a monitor mix or only the computer audio on your line output. And I want to highlight that there's also a loopback feature which merges the audio from your inputs with the audio from your computer and this mix can be sent to a streaming or communication software. What's also important is of course the round trip latency which should be as low as possible to not perceive any delay when for example using virtual instruments or amp sims. Here you can see the RTL for a sample rate of 48 kHz and different buffer sizes. I want to point out that compared to many other audio interfaces the 2x2HR's buffer size can be set as low as 4 samples. But even with a such a low buffer size the round trip latency is still a bit higher than what I typically see from other interfaces. Of course with a sample rate of 192 kHz the RTLs get even lower but they are still a bit on the higher side. That said I would still call this an acceptable performance. Now what do I think of the Tascam US2x2HR? Well it pretty much delivers on the promises that Tascam made and it nicely utilizes the new high resolution AD slash DA converter. The dynamic range of the in and outputs is great and the preamp noise is extremely low. The distortions for the inputs and main output are also kept in check which contributes to an overall good audio quality. The one exception is the headphone output. Here the height output impedance and high amount of harmonic distortion shows that you should not use low impedance headphones for critical listening with the 2x2HR. Luckily it can deliver quite a bit of power into high impedance headphones which mostly eliminates the before mentioned problems. So again I can only recommend to use headphones with an impedance of at least 150 ohms with the 2x2HR to get the best audio quality possible. Throughout this video I've compared the 2x2HR multiple times to the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 third generation and these interfaces actually perform quite similar. Price wise the 2x2HR seems to be a bit more expensive compared to the 2i2. But you also get some more goodies like an even more robust construction, slightly better preamps, a loopback feature and most importantly a MIDI in and output which might be one of the deciding factors for you. 
So if you're looking for an audio interface in this price range, I think the Tascam US2X2HR is a good option. If you use Heimpeed's headphones. There, I said it again, I will shut up now. Please leave a like and subscribe and I will see you all in the next one.